I was at Estill Fork, Alabama. We were waiting in a creek behind Paint Rock Valley Lodge and Retreat. I was with uh, Gary Holzheimer and John Grochowalski. And as we were waiting in this creek trying to fish for these little red red eye or long ear fish, I ended up seeing something protruding out of the sand. And I thought I'd found an artifact. So I, I went over and I brushed off the dirt and I pried around on it and I pulled up not a fossil, but the fully intact hip bone of a cow. Now, as bones go, hip bones of cows seem to be fascinating to me because they look like a skull mask. You see, you've got this convex shape. You've got these two massive holes in the bone. You've got all the ridges and the imperfections and the bone spurs. And then you've got these long protruding ends that look like these dull blunted horns. And it makes a great horror mask. It makes a great prop for a lot of things. I've, I've carried my, my cow bone to uh, camping trips or, or to Halloween parties. And people start telling stories about, you know, Bigfoot or the cryptoids that people believe or don't believe in. And, and I pull that thing out and just set it down and say, well, we killed a gargoyle one time. And people will look at this thing and it looks just like the, the face of something, but you can't even begin to imagine what the face of that something might have been. I found one of these little hip sections of a deer and it was a small deer, one of the full grown deer, you know, probably a little yearling or a fawn or something. And I found one perfectly preserved in Arkansas. I laid it in the grass, put my pistol under it, took a picture, posted it on Facebook with this caption. I'm not sure what a chupacabra is, but I'm sure glad I had my pistol. And I created a firestorm. I got comments and messages and horrified looks. One girl said that she would had been in the woods all her life and never seen anything like that and would never take her dogs out at night again. I had to private message her and say, look, that's not a real monster. It's not a real creature. It, it, it's, it's a piece of a skeleton off of a dead creature, and, and it's the back end, not, not the front end. <laughs> I later combined my, my cow mask with my ghillie suit. Now, what a grown man is doing with a ghillie suit, that's a different story. But I developed this thing where I wanted to try to hunt deer while sitting on the ground in a leaf suit with my bow. I've shot plenty of deer from the air. I, I bushwhacked deer from a sniper position. But I wanted to see if I could get on the ground in the brush and, and maybe shoot some deer up close and personal. It's super challenging and very, very exciting. But when I'm not hunting and I'm playing Halloween costumes, you take this long, looks like long strings of moss and leaves poncho and you put it on. And then you put this bone mask on over your head, and it looks truly demonic. I call it the ghillie demon. Well, for some reason, I was in Arkansas, and I had my both my ghillie suit and, and my cow skull. And it's not really a skull, but that's what I call it. And and I was on the property that, that my wife owns. Her, her grandmother you know, left property to all the grandkids and the cousins. And I don't know if I was hiking. I don't know if I was hunting. Maybe I was just running the trails. But as I ran through, I came across this game camera. Now, in those days, I didn't use a game camera to hunt. I knew Shane didn't use a game camera. And so somebody's on the property without permission. And they've got a game camera out looking to see what the game is doing. Now, that's really not a big deal that somebody's on Jackie's property. Uh, I hunt on property out there that doesn't belong to me. Uh, I hunt on other people's property more than I hunt on our own property. But anyway, I found this game camera. So I go back to the house and I get my ghillie suit and my cow skull. I do a little research on what the effective range of a game camera is. And I kind of estimate and I kind of get where you get a picture, but you're not really in focus. You get a picture and you're not really in the main foreground. You're you're just in the background. And so I'd stand out there in the woods and I'd throw large sticks out in front of the game camera to get it to trigger. And I did two or three, you know, oblique angles and, and maybe, you know, some, some looked like from the front and, you know, be on my hands and knees so the ghillie suit wouldn't expose my legs and look like I'm grazing. Never really heard anything from it. And then one day after church, I'm I'm standing there in the foyer and my friend Avery Russell, Avery's the guy that when I first moved to Arkansas would take me trespassing, I mean, take me hunting. Well, he came up to me and put his arm around me and looked at me real serious, said, 
do, do you ever go in the woods on Jacqueline's property? I said, yeah, sometimes I go over there and prowl around. He goes, well, let me just tell you, you should probably wear a pistol. There's something in those woods. And that's the only conversation we ever had about his game camera being on the property and me having a Halloween costume on the property at the same time. I never really got the chance to explain to him that it was just me in a costume, but he was worried about it. <laughs> now, in theory, I recognize the fact that there's activity in the woods when I'm not there. I've never owned a game camera. But knowing that if you have a game camera, you can see the things that happen when you're not there. You know, I, I know things happen in the woods when I'm not there. Trails don't just magically appear. I know that when trees are lying on the ground, it means they fell when I wasn't there. Nests are built, burrows are dug, ac acorns are gathered, and the animals move about. They travel from here to there. They travel from feeding to bedding, or they just wander through. I acknowledge this. I mean, I, I, intellectually, I know this. But it really didn't hit me until Jackie bought me a game camera. Now, game cameras is a fascinating little device, and they're technological marvels. They're triggered by motion. They see in the dark. They take pictures of things that happen in their field of view, and they are not limited, as I said, by daylight or dark. They have a night vision function as well, and the model that Jackie bought me, once it takes a picture, actually sends that picture to my phone almost in real time. I know there are animals in that little spot that I hunt up on Kill Mountain. I see the trails. I see the nipped off tops of plants, the green briars and the stuff in the green field. I see the crunched up acorns. I see trees that have been rubbed. But acknowledging that this happens and knowing, all capital letters, knowing it are two different things. I had this buck on camera that I gave a nickname, and I nicknamed him based on his pattern of travel and the fact that he doesn't attend church, apparently. Because two or three times I would be in front of an auditorium preaching and my phone would wiggle in my pocket. And then after I would get down from the podium and, and, and be sitting in the seat after church and, and, and look at my, my phone, I would have a picture of this buck in two or three Sundays in a row while I'm trying to preach. He's up there gallivanting around in front of my game camera having his picture taken. He needs to be in church at 1030 while I'm in church. And we need to decide to meet up there when neither one of us needs to be in church so I can hunt him. But he's prancing around and parading in front of my game camera while I'm preaching. Now, it's not particularly inspiring for me to see a picture of a deer in the dark. Now, I get lots of pictures of deer in the dark. I'm, I'm glad the deer come by. I like to see, you know, if there's antlered bucks there, I like to see what's going on. What's interesting is when you see a picture of a deer in the daylight. You see, when a deer shows up in the daylight, you realize, if I'd been there today, you know, you, you, you get up and you think, I'm not going to hunt today, or it's too windy, or it's too foggy, or whatever, and you choose not to go, and then that game camera wiggles, and you have this pit in your stomach, and this hollowness in your chest, and you realize, man, if I'd only been there. You see, a lot happens when you're not there. Oh, the deer walk through and browse, that little fast hawk comes and lands in the same tree. <laughs> the selfie squirrel shows up and shows out like he actually knows there's a camera there. Occasionally, you see a fox walk by. You see the family of raccoons. The coyotes come through. I've seen a bobcat every now and then. And there's one guy up there who has a, a game camera. He's got a picture of a mountain lion on it. But the fact that I'm not present doesn't mean that the action stops. Because I'm not present doesn't mean that there's no activity. My not being present doesn't mean nothing going on. I wonder what it would be like. I wonder if it would do us any good, wake us up, change our action or our perspective, if we could have an emotional or spiritual game camera. I wonder if we, what it would do for us if we just had some insight into what's going on and what we're missing when we're not present. What do we miss when we're not there, when we're not engaged when we're not paying attention. You see, there could be any number of theirs. There could represent worship or work or service opportunities or just being present with your friends or your family. 
any number of theirs where we miss the opportunity to act. We miss the opportunity to do something or we miss the opportunity to be engaged. And you see, even if we're not there, even if we're not present, these things continue to happen. Being absent doesn't stop them or prevent them. If if we're not there, we're not present. We just miss them. We miss the event. We miss the opportunity. You see, an emotional or spiritual game camera would be so valuable to show us what we're missing and that even though things go on, we would even see that what we missed. You may be reminded from time to time that you missed. You missed out. Or you weren't present. But one of those days, those reminders are going to run out of batteries. You see, even my game camera has to be recharged every now and then, and it quits sending me pictures and reminders of what was happening when I wasn't there. Even without the game camera, I've been there but not been present. And there's a subtle distinction between there and present. You see, even without the game camera, I've been in the woods and been bored, sleepy, distracted, caught reading a book or looking at my phone and allow things to happen around me, sneak up on me or sneak by me or get past me and never really paid it the proper attention. I've been in the woods and and not actually had the right mindset to hunt. I've been hunting with people and sometimes forgotten that the people were the reason we were hunting. We weren't hunting people, but we're hunting with people. And and I've explained this to my brother. I said, hey, you know, when his kids were little, I said, you can take your kids hunting or you can go hunting, but you can't do both. Well, the same is true about grandkids. You can hunt or you can take your grandkids hunting, but you can't really do both. And when you take your grandkids hunting, it's more about snacks and letting people talk and answering questions and asking questions and telling stories and taking naps and then... If you get to shoot a game animal, it's fine. Gunner and I have been hunting many times and all we did was shoot acorns. But the reason for being there is to be with them, to be engaged. And if you take somebody hunting or fishing or wherever, you know, that that classic line from the movies where the dad on the vacation says, and we're going to have a good time. Well, you don't force that. It's just organic. But if you're there, and you're frustrated or impatient or irritated, and you don't enjoy the experience, you might as well not have been there because you weren't present. John Gottman kind of talks about being there when he talks about bids for affection. And it's not the big moments or the quality time that we miss. It's it's the times that we miss. Not the quality time, but the times we miss. The times we could hold hands walk to the mailbox, ride to the store together. Ask people or people ask us to engage and we can be present with them by watching the same show, by eating at places we don't really like, but just to go there to be with them. Doing something trivial. You know, ladies, we don't always want you to help us, but we like you to watch us when we do stuff. We we like you to to watch us and and talk to us while we're in the shop building or making or doing or piddling. And we want to tell you about it after we've done it. That's what being present is about. Those are bids for affection. And, and, And let's admit, being in the same room is not the same as being together. Being there, being present is about being intentional with your engagement. I see couples or whole families at dinner and everybody's on their phone. I'm guilty of being at home and my mind being at work. I'm guilty of of watching my phone more than I'm watching TV and not engaging with what's going on. And what I've discovered with the game camera, if life goes on, whether you engage in it or not, Your children will go and do and change and grow whether you pay attention to them or not. Your spouse will engage in life whether or not you engage with them. The church, the team, the club, the group will not stop because you weren't there. 
not being there doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It it just simply means you missed it. You missed the opportunity to engage, to encourage, to listen, to sympathize, to learn, to participate, to show interest, to invest with your spouse, with your children, with your friends, with your siblings, with your parents, with your community, with your church. Attentive, focused, intentional, and purposeful. Not just merely being there, but being present while you are there. And just like the game camera, just because you weren't present when it happened doesn't mean it won't happen. It's just going to happen without you. I want to live such a life that I don't just see the pictures. And I don't really want to just be there when the picture is taken. I want to be present. I want to be in the picture. 